let you in on a little secret. I don't know how to dress anymore and I don't know what my style is. Another little secret being this was not the video I had planned for this week. All right, all right, God, oh my God. Initially, I had grand plans of making something this week, but alas. Wah. Turns out making a stone wall in your barn in three days, not the best choice if you want healthy wrists. Tiny break from making stuff for a little bit. Doctor's orders. And by doctor, of course, I mean just a quick Google search and reading the first article that came up. In lieu of making something, I thought we could do a closet purge. I'm pretty overdue for this. Don't buy new clothes much anymore, nor do I wear clothes anymore. There are two parts of me. I love putting together an outfit. And then the other part of me is, what's the ding dang point of it all? So that leaves me in this weird limbo of sometimes wanting to make a nice outfit and wear it, and then sometimes looking like this. I'm gonna plan for this. Go through my wardrobe, pick out stuff I don't wanna wear. Really try my hardest not to do the what ifs scenarios. But what if I attend an 18th century vampire ball? I'm also going to make a mend pile, which I'm gonna try to get to tomorrow. Go through and repair some of the stuff that I, I couldn't be bothered to fix. But before we do that, this video is sponsored. To talk a little bit about that and to talk about food is sponsored, Rachel. Yes, hello. Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh, which you may have heard about, but if not, it is a meal delivery service. You can go onto HelloFresh and get all of the ingredients that you need to make these meals sent right to your doorstep. Seasonal ingredients that are picked at peak ripeness. I like that. Peak, peak ripeness. ripeness. The ingredients travel from the farm right to your house in less than seven days. So you know that they're all fresh. And you can really customize the meals you want. Customize the protein if you want vegetarian. There are over 40 weekly recipes that you can choose from. And now you can even upgrade to organic chicken or organic beef which is pretty cool. Each meal that you get comes in its own little paper baggie, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but I've had other meal service kits where everything is all in one box, and so it's kind of a scavenger hunt when you go to actually make the meals. Everything that you need is just step-by-step, pre-portioned ingredients so you're not wasting anything. That's another reason I really don't like grocery shopping. I always have to end up buying way more than I need. I made the balsamic tomato and herb chicken this week, and oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> such a time saver and a stress saver. If you want to check them out, make sure you head to hellofresh.com. Use my code rachelmaxi60 for 60% off and free shipping. Once again, hellofresh.com, rachelmaxi60, save 60% off and free shipping. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this video. And before adieus are in any way furthered, let's get back to purging my closet. Starting off with this closet. This is where I keep my tops and such. Tops and such! I'm starting to think that song by Tears for Fears is in fact about closet purges. These are the things I can do without. I'm just gonna do it. Out. But what if I attend an 18th century vampire ball? <laughs> Let's move on to pants. Hup. Okay, dresses and skirts. Of which I keep in the hallway closet. I'm just gonna go to Narnia real quick. You're done. Hmm. That's nice. That there is another pile. Let's do this. Let's start with shirts. I'm gonna start with something. I feel like I've kind of evolved out of blazers. I am gonna keep a few, but I feel like if it's actually cold enough to wear a blazer over your outfit, I just, I reach for a jacket or a coat. Since I don't foresee an elderly wizard coming to my door asking if I wanna go on an adventure in Middle Earth anytime soon, I think it's gotta go. <sighs> Look at me. I don't want it. 
Farewell, my friend. I wore you maybe twice. I think I got this at one of my local vintage shops. It came with the stains on it, so some schmutz on there. Oh, missing a button. It's very cute. I just don't reach for it. Something different I'm gonna do this time. I usually just donate to my local thrift store. I don't know what becomes of them and it's it's almost like a out of sight, out of mind thing. Kind of give it to them and whatever they do with them, it's not my problem, but I'm trying to be a little bit more mindful of where I send this stuff so that it doesn't actually just end up in a landfill anyways, even though I'm donating them. Doing some research on maybe like women's shelters that might need the clothing a little bit more than just a thrift store who is just gonna turn a profit on it. Send them to a meaningful place and not just the void. Anywho, corduroy, bestie thing. I just, I feel like it fits me kind of weird, but now that I'm looking at it, this is kind of cute. Gapy, but I think I could maybe add snap there. Dinkelberg! I'm gonna put this in my maybe pile. Moving things along here. Cute little waistcoat. You're out of here! I just ordered this on Etsy. I was looking for like a hobbity crocheted little number. I misjudged the color on the online listing. It's very orange. Like if you see it in person, it's giving traffic cone. <laughs> and it also just doesn't fit great. I can alter it. It's just yarn from what I can tell. I don't think it's any kind of special yarn. I might dye this because I think I would wear it if it was a different color. This is gonna go in my mend pile, which will be over here. This next one, it's one of my favorite shirts. I love this shirt. I really do. When it's tucked into pants or something, it's super cute. My problem is that really discolored permanent stains that I've tried to get out with all of the concoctions that Google has told me. It's just kind of yellowy now. It's kind of gross. <laughs> so what I'm wondering, if my problem would be fixed if I were to dye this a different color. I am a very sweaty person. Um, I'm not afraid to admit it. To even wear this, I had to put on armpit maxi pads. Huh? See? We'll see. I'm gonna put this in my men pile. This one, I think I might donate to a museum. Either a Victorian or Edwardian blouse. Look at those details. It's so nice. If anyone is gonna be wearing historical garments that require delicacy and <laughs> caution, that person is not me. The craftsmanship. This is off to the historical pile, which will be here. I ordered this one by mistake when I was trying to order an Evie blouse. Once again, misjudged the colors online. Gone. This one still has the price tag on it. Oh. With lipstick on. Pray for me. <gasps> oh, God. <sighs> I thought this would be really cute when I bought it. I hate it. I had a very strong... 70s moment this summer. Finding a bra to wear with this is not easy. Brick! God damn it. I just want to listen to Fleetwood Mac. Maybe pun, oh god. This is another one that bras make complicated, and so I don't usually end up wearing. Nope, gone. Knitted and cute. I think I've just held on to it because I really like it as an item, but um, actually wearing it. No, not once. This one I also haven't worn, but I got it at Brimfield this year. And part of me wants to keep it out of stubbornness because I thought it was really funny. It's this old bowling shirt. Eh? It says Chris on it. That's not my name. Nick just did not think it was quite as humorous as I did. So I bought it. And now that same stubbornness is probably gonna mean that I'm gonna keep this. I don't know, I just thought it was cute. Keeping it. Take that, Nicholas. Okay, that does it for shirts. Skirts. Still has the price tag on it. Really tight. Going forward, I'm trying not to purchase skirts that are gonna be too tight. Don't enjoy wearing skirts that I feel like I can't eat anything in. The skirt itself is cute. It really doesn't have any shape, you know? Banished. Wool buttoned skirt. I don't like the shape. I really like when skirts kind of just go out. <laughs> that curve shape, quite simply, is just straight. It doesn't sit right. As I'm getting older, I want my skirts to be squishy, my sleeves to be extravagant, and my pockets to be real. I've had this skirt forever. It's really cute. I think it's probably from the 70s. Autumn colors. Um, it's missing a button. Instead, of taking probably seven minutes to sew on a new button. I have always just opted for a safety pin. <laughs> so, doesn't have much of a shape. We have to be harsh. It's gone. 
This is another wool skirt that I'm actually putting on now and kind of... Uh, all right, I might keep this one. It is tight. When I can get this buttoned, way too tight. So I am getting rid of it. And that's that. This skirt I got, I liked how it looked with shapewear. It's tight and I don't always feel like putting on shapewear and I just have not worn this since. I thought maybe I could be a little saucy. Nope, call me plain spaghetti because <laughs> I'm getting rid of this. Pants, these are probably gonna be super wrinkly. Forgive me. Also, if any of you disrespect my aesthetic socks, you can get wrecked. They're actually two socks because my feet get cold. First pair of pants I have had for so long. <laughs> and now that I'm wearing them, I don't know why I haven't worn them in a while. All right, I'm, I'm gonna keep these. These ones for sure I'm getting rid of. These are fake pockets, first of all. How dare you? There's a lot of blankness here on the butt. There's literally nothing going on. Why am I out of breath? They're fine. Gone. Fake pockets. Wool pants. But, yet again. Where? Nowhere. No pockets. No patience. These ones I ordered online. And they don't even fit, so I don't know why they were even in my parents' drawer. Hello? Gone. They're gone. These ones I got, I think, on ThreadUp, and I thought maybe they would be cute. Ah. Nope. Gone. And finally, dresses. My criteria for this is basically if it's not comfortable, it's out. That being said, though, let me start with a very comfortable dress. It's really, really comfy. I think it's a little too vibrant for me. Yeah, I don't know. As Lizzo once prophesized, it's about damn time to get rid of this dress. This one, it's from Little Women Atelier. It's just really tight, which is a shame because look at the swoosh on this baby. And like the little scalloped details, it is a really, really cute dress. It does fit, but I am honestly perspiring trying to get this side zipper up without Nick's help. It's kind of just like stuck there. We don't have time for dresses that we can't eat snacks in. I can't get it off. Ah, I'm being reverse born. Oh my god. Look at those sleeves. Come on now. The bottom is just kind of underwhelming. Usually would just put a skirt on. The ruching kind of ends here so that there's like this weird gap. If I were to put stays, a nice flowy skirt, maybe it would look nice. Uh, curse you gigantic sleeves! I'm gonna keep it. Oh gosh. This one is from the 40s, I believe. I generally like the shape of it, but I hate the buttons. I told myself that I would replace the buttons, which of course I never did. And it's kind of tight, no pockets. It's gone. I got 99 problems and no pockets is one. Another vintage dress that I thought was really stinking cute. The back zipper is the actual devil. Once again, it can zip up. I need Nick's help and he's not here right now. So <laughs> really, really picky with my skirt lengths. If it doesn't go below my knee, like mid calf, this one is 50s. So it's, I think it's right at my knees. Gone. This one is actually a Sunday floor dress, which is a beloved brand in the sort of cottage core community. This dress is so stinking cute. This collar detail, it's linen. They're supposed to be more loose fitting, so they kind of just don't have a ton of shape. I would like this to look like <laughs> that, you know? It's a, it's a lot of dress, I feel kind of constricted with the sleeves and everything. I don't know, I just, uh, I wanna look hot. This doesn't do it for me. Goodbye. Ah uh, yes, another dress that has survived quite a few closet purges. Pink 50s dress. It fits great, the shape is great, the swoosh is great. I just, I don't wear pink. Kept it because it's literally my only pink item of clothing. I don't. 
and so it's gone. This is another thing I got at the vintage store. I have a complex where if I go to a vintage store, I can't not buy anything. So I think I end up compromising a lot and being like, yeah, I would wear that. And then I bring it home and I don't wear it. My thinking was I would wear some go-go boots with it and then like do kind of 60s hair and makeup. I think that would look adorable. I do. Am I going to do that? Correct, I am not. This is another oldie that I've had for a really long time and for some reason just haven't gotten rid of it. It's missing a hook, hangs open like that. <laughs> Even if I were to fix it, it's really, really tight. <sighs> and on top of that, I also don't like the length. Kneecaps. <laughs> and now another dress that has survived at least two closet purchases. Ta-da! Dang it! <laughs> Every single time I put on this dress, I'm like, no, it's gone for sure. It is gone. And then I put it on and I'm like, okay. Is it though? Okay, woohoo. You're tearing me apart! Brick. <sighs> I'm gonna keep it. I know, oh, I'm sorry. Pinafore thing? Admittedly, I have worn a lot over the years, but it's always been kind of just like, eh, I guess I'll wear this. The waist is not quite right for my body. My waist should be here. When I do pair this with a skirt, and it always looks just like a little bit weird. I don't know. It's fine, I guess, but it's not up to my standard of swoosh. I think it's finally time to give it up. So with that, we can move to fixing and mending. Let's go. Welcome to mending day. <laughs> kind of have put a lot of work on myself today, but we're gonna try to get it all done. First up in preparation of today, I did run to the fabric store to grab everything that I think I need. Today will be full of repairs, modifications, and dyeing. First up is repairs. I have this dress basically lived in this entire summer. So much so that the elastic that was in the sleeves came loose and I guess is just living in there now. Naturally, I have been putting that off, not wearing it since then because I can't be bothered to take the 10 minutes that it'll probably take to find the elastic in that casing and re-thread it through and attach it to the other side to give it back its squanchiness. I also have this skirt from Little Woman Atelier. The zipper is completely busted, fraying and coming off of the fabric. So I did buy a new zipper. I'm gonna try to replace that. Modifications. I mentioned that yarn vest. I do wanna see if I can dye a different color. I put it up to my yarn savvy friends if I can in fact dye that. And they said it completely depends on the fiber content. If it's wool or you know a natural fiber, then I should be able to dye it. And if it's an acrylic or like a synthetic yarn, then it'll be a bit harder. And I did not grab synthetic dye so it might just not take at all. We're gonna find out. They recommended doing the burn test, you know, as much as I identify with that Elmo gif. I think I'm just gonna try to dye it and see what happens. <laughs> going to try to dye that pillowy sleeve blouse. I'm gonna put the slightest bit of brown. Hopefully that works. I also have this dress, which I, again, lived in this past summer. Much like any other of my white or cream colored clothing, it has seen better days. It looks really dirty no matter what I do. Grabbed a gold dye for that, like a yellowy mustardy color, and I really don't have any dresses in that color. My gut instinct was to dye it brown of course, but I figured I would get adventurous. To top this all off, Sande Fleur dress that I talked about yesterday, I really do love it. I just really don't like the sleeves. So what I'm gonna try to do is convert that into a pinafore. Pinafores are simply. Now with modifying anything, I feel like there's always gonna be people who are like, and I totally get that, but I wanna turn it into a pinafore, so that's what I'm gonna do. So let's start with dyeing first. Handy dandy dyeing tub. So the directions say to add salt and liquid dish detergent. I did not have liquid, so I cut open this dish detergent pod and then I put some salt in there. So, slightest bit of brown. Gentle. Oop. Okay, whoa. Oh. 
give it a shot. Fare thee well, soldier. Good soup. All right, well, it says to leave this in for 30 minutes. So we'll see. So while that's dying, I am going to get started on the pinafore. I have already marked off where I want the pinafore to end. So I'm thinking I can just chop off the sleeve and collar section. I'm gonna save the collar maybe to put on something else. Frick fracking cute. I believe I can use the sleeves for both the facing and the straps. Let's give it a shot. Look at that sunshine boy. Hey baby boy. <laughs> I kind of wung it with the facings and I just traced over the exterior shapes of the dress and it seemed to work fine, so. <laughs> It looks like it worked, but I feel like you can never really know. And then, because this soup is already nice and hot, I think I'm just gonna add the gold. Whoa, that was a lot, oh my god. Soup number two. I don't know if that's enough water. Huh? Add a little bit of water. Ew. Looks like the urine of a very dehydrated person. I'm gonna let that do its thing for 30 minutes. Get back to the pinafore. Multitasking. Okay, so taking that facing that's all sewn together and aligning it with its corresponding shapes, and then the straps need to go in between that and the dress. And then I stitched along the line and then later ironed it. Bath number two, it took, so that's good. <laughs> Yummy. We're gonna attempt to dye the vest. I'm gonna go kind of heavy handed on the brown. Just for giggles, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the gold. And then it says to add vinegar if you're trying to dye wool, which I'm assuming that's what this is. Double, double, soil and trouble. I, I really don't have a lot of confidence in this, but it goes nothing. Oh, it smells like chips. I mean, hey, we know the drill. I'm gonna wait 30 minutes, I guess, and hope that it doesn't shrink. <laughs> While waiting for that, I began my rescue mission for the lost elastic, attached it to a safety pin, and then threaded it through like I would as if I were making the dress, until I finally made it to the other side, and then I stitched it. Then I very carefully removed the zipper from that skirt, grabbed the one that I bought, kind of just replaced it along its tracks, um, and then hand stitched it. I, this is not very pretty, but it got the job done. It's been stewing for quite a while now. I mean, it might have worked. <laughs> oh. The dress uh, is looking a little tie-dye. Sleeves are completely different colors. This is gonna go back into a little dye bath. Hopefully I can get it more this color and not this pale yellow. Um, I don't really know what happened. <laughs> it does say you're supposed to put them in wet and I did not, so maybe it was like air trapped in there. We're learning. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, <laughs> bath number two results are looking pretty good. Okay, that is it for today. I'm really, really happy with like 80% of the changes. I'm calling it quits for today. I'll show you the results tomorrow. say this one is pretty much a success and I'm so happy I didn't ruin it. I did kind of solve the problem instead of it looking like a white blouse that's dirty. Now it just all looks kind of dirty. Success. Next. Well, this one I don't think worked. I mean, maybe slightest microscopic amount because it's not quite as offensive to my eyeballs as it was before 
So that's a good sign. And I also took in the sides a bit, so I think it fits a little bit better now. But at least I didn't ruin it, and at least it didn't shrink. <laughs> that's a win in my book. I'm so glad I can finally wear this skirt again because I was really, really bummed when the zipper broke. And you know, I was kind of worried about the zipper looking like trash because it does. Thankfully, the bow hides it. <laughs> huh? Success. Next. <laughs> about how this came out with the long sleeves. I just really did not want to wear it. But now I can wear it with long sleeves underneath. I can wear it with short sleeves. I can wear it as a sundress. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior, Pinafores? I added a little snap here so that it would stay closed. I mean, what, did that take me maybe a couple hours? A really drastic difference. I am chuffed. Next. This is another very simple one, but I mean, successful, <laughs> I guess. I do not know why it took me so long to do. I'm so happy because I love this dress. I continue to wear it about 76 more times in this year alone. <laughs> one last dress. All right, well, I have some thoughts on this. For the most part, I think it came out great. I was not wearing it before because it just had that old sweaty dress vibe. So now I'm totally gonna wear this a lot more. I did not realize that the strings wouldn't dye as well. I don't mind. It's a bit tie-dye. Not as bad as it was before I did the second dye bath, but I think it kind of makes it look like a vintage dress, like an antique dress. So that's what I'm going with and I'm sticking with it. One of my very beginning forays into dyeing stuff. I really have not done much of it before. Any tips would be appreciated. I hope that you guys liked this two-parter. I wanted to do something a little bit more than a closet purge. Going forward, I'm trying to be, like I said, a little bit more mindful about the stuff that I donate, where I donate things, if I can fix stuff and give stuff a second life that will make me wear it more. I'm still doing research into if I can send some clothing to shelters. It looks like a lot of places aren't accepting used clothing since the plague. I'll have to do a little bit more research, maybe into local places that I can just drop off. My other option I'm thinking is to sell. I do have a Depop. Since I have a little bit more time with my new schedule, I might list these items on there for just really, really cheap, maybe 10 to 20 bucks. It's kind of paying for the amount of time it takes to measure everything, list everything, photograph everything. A lot of times with vintage clothing, it's hard to get because they're so expensive. I like to give people a chance to get their hands on stuff. And you know, I'm not looking to make what I paid for it back or anything. So that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Hopefully I'm back to making stuff soon. My wrist is feeling a little bit better. It's my money maker. We shall see. Anyways, Patreon, it's there. Patreon exclusive stuff, $5 a month. Yes. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this video. Head to HelloFresh.com, use my code RACHELMAXI60 for 60% off and free shipping. I love you whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every other Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. I feel like my outros are getting so long now. Oh well. Bye. <sighs> These are the things I can do without. Uh, yeah. Ooh, I'm so strong. But you may. <laughs> Excuse me. Mouth breather. Come in. My gut instinct was. Was it? Yeah.